My dear colleagues, I thank you for joining me here on such short notice. I've asked you here because for the third time in two years, war looms in the Balkans. As you know, last month's despicable murder of Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand shocked us all. We offer our deepest condolences to the Austro-Hungarian Empire in this tragic time. Austria-Hungary has a right to be upset. However, we urge moderation and hope that cooler heads might prevail. Another war in the Balkans would be regrettable. So where do we stand? I hope you'll all forgive me for being frank as I lay out what's happened so far. Austria has delivered an ultimatum to Serbia. Serbia has accepted nine of these demands, but rejected one of them. And in response, Austria-Hungary is mobilized against Serbia. Germany naturally supports Austria, her ally. But Russia has voiced concerns that uh, uh, Serbia is not being treated fairly. Uh, Russia would not tolerate a war between Austria-Hungary and Serbia. I fear if Russia is drawn into a war with Austria-Hungary, the rest of Europe might be drawn in as well. So that brings us to the task at hand, to prevent such a war. To begin, I'd like to ask each of you to share your country's position on the current crisis. And Count Berchtold will let you begin as representative for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Thank you, Sir Gray, and for convening this conference. For the past few years, the existence of the subversive movement in the Kingdom of Serbia directed at the monarchy has become obvious. This movement has found expression in acts of terror, assassination attempts, and outright murder. As we are all aware, the most recent manifestation of these violent acts was the assassination of our beloved Archduke, Franz Ferdinand, the nephew of His Imperial Majesty, Franz Joseph, the Emperor of Austria and King of Hungary. The Serbian government has done nothing to suppress this movement and has instead tolerated the criminal actions of those who wish to harm the monarchy, excuse me, has allowed for the propagation of hatred and animosity in the Serbian press and educational institutions, and has allowed government officials and military officers to participate in acts of violence directed at the monarchy with impunity. It is clear from the statements and confessions of the authors of the assassination that the murder was conceived of uh, in Belgrade and that the materials used to implement their murderous designs were readily supplied by the Serbian authorities. It is also clear that the imperial royal government faces an existential threat from our neighbors to the south, which must be met with military action if the totality of our demands are not met immediately. We do not believe that the security of the monarchy and the safety of our people can be ensured in any other way. The imperial and royal government has for many years acted with patient tolerance toward the kingdom of Serbia in an effort to maintain peace in the region. This is course of action is no longer possible as our gestures of good faith have been met with murderous criminality on the part of the Serbian terrorists and indeed the Serbian <coughs> government itself. We are eager to hear from our esteemed colleagues on this matter. Thank you, Count Berktold. Uh, Count Sazanov, I'd like to hear the Russian position. Well, thank you, Sir Gray, and firstly, allow me to thank you for welcoming us to these very wonderful accommodations here for this conference. Gentlemen, we are standing on a cliff's edge, about to hurl into an abyss that will lead to war. Fortunately, I have a very easy way to resolve all of these matters so we're not than driven into the calamity that, stand, that might be before us. What is that? It would be simply for the Austro-Hungarian Empire to withdraw their ultimatum, reconsider its form, and perhaps we might then be able to come to a resolution. The fact of the matter is, as our Serbian counterpart would have mentioned had he been invited, but since he has not, I will take it upon myself to uh, do what I can to represent their wishes here. The fact is, is that they are being uh, accused of supporting an assassination that, while a tragedy, they had nothing to do with. They had nothing to do with this young man who decided to act as an independent actor and perpetrate this tragedy. However, the Austro-Hungarian Empire has decided to take it upon themselves to hold the entire Serbian people guilty for this one act, which is just preposterous by any standard. The Sardom of Russia will not tolerate that and quite simply, we will come to the aid of our Serbian allies if need be. Thank you, Count Sazanov. Count von Bethmann, Germany. Thank you, Sir Edward. Uh, and thank you to His Majesty uh, the King for inviting us to London, his, his excellent capital, to have this discussion. I would like to open by expressing the condolences of Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany to our friends 
in Austria. We are deeply saddened by the loss that you have experienced, and we stand by you in this difficult time. Gentlemen, Austria has a right to demand restitution for this senseless act of violence, which has been perp perpetrated against the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne by a terrorist acting, we believe, on behalf of elements within the Serbian government. Serbia's reticence to accept the most important of Austria's demands, an open investigation in order to determine whether or not there were guilty elements within the Serbian government and to punish those that are guilty accordingly has been rejected. We believe this speaks volumes to the guilt of the Serbian government in this matter. It is an absolute necessity, gentlemen, that the peace-loving monarchies of Europe present a unified front against this horrendous act of violence. This is a pattern which we have observed over the past several years, and frankly, Serbian aggression toward their neighbors must stop. We are shocked that the Russian Empire <coughs> has taken such a lenient stance regarding a blatant act of regicide, which surely is a matter of concern to all of the monarchies of Europe. This affront to the institutions which have ensured the stability of our continent must not go unpunished. So gentlemen, the task before us is to determine how we can guarantee the security of our Austrian friends from this threat which does not appear likely to go away on its own. And that has been demonstrated, I think, by the hesitance of the Serbian government to cooperate in the spirit of peace. Thank you. Thank you, Count von Bethmann. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Poincaré of France. Um, first of all, France, like all of my esteemed colleagues here, would like to thank Sir Gray and the British Empire for bringing us all together to discuss this most important issue that is at hand. Um, France does agree that the assassination of the Archduke was a despicable action. However, the assassin has been captured and dealt with. And we feel that the amount of time, the month and leg for Austro the Austro-Hungarian Empire to actually take action in this situation in terms of its aggressive policies towards Serbia uh, makes us question what's really going on here. Is this really about revenge or is, is something else underneath the surface here. We feel that Serbia is an innocent offender that is being aggressively pursued by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And last of all, France um, is personally offended that the ultimatum was released while we were on our state visit to Russia. And it was not only me, but also my Minister of Foreign Affairs who was visiting Russia. So we could not convene with our cabinet to discuss this issue properly. Before you continue, I would also like to commend Sir Edward for uh, urging moderation and for convening today's meeting. I myself am a longtime supporter of any effort toward international arbitration, but I feel it necessary to say what we need, gentlemen, what the workmen of your great nations need is a prudent policy that will limit the current crisis. And I urge all of you today to take any measure that you have to help keep the peace in Europe. We need to keep this in mind at today's meeting. I too can applaud the fact that the great powers of Europe are still talking about the issues in dispute here, not yet fighting. But at the same time, I'm more than a little disturbed about the fact of this regional dispute already having escalated to a level of great peril. Yes, I welcome the attempt of Sir Edward to mediate between the uh, parties most directly affected by this dispute. But I suggest he can perform a still greater service to the European peace, and that is by stating unequivocally that Britain will never become embroiled in a conflict in which no vital national interest is at stake. Now, now, I'm going to cut you off there. We have uh, a lot to debate. Um, Britain's position on this matter is one of regret. That needs to be understood. We do not condone the underhanded tactics of the Serbian government uh, that in these actions uh, in relation to the Sarajevo case. However, surely, Count Berchtold, their acceptance of nine out of ten of the points of your ultimatum is a sign of goodwill. Will you not take that as a sign of their good faith? It would be a sign of goodwill <clears throat> if it were not what we feel is most important article, really. Before I get to 
potential compromise and discussion of the ultimatum, I'd like to address some of the issues that were just brought up by my colleagues to the right. <clears throat> Count Sazanov, you mentioned this as being one act, one isolated act of terrorism. In fact, <clears throat> it is one of many. And the notion that the Serbian government had absolutely nothing to do with these acts of terror is just false. They've created a climate in which extreme positions could flourish in both the press and their educational institutions. And there's evidence, as, uh, as my friend <coughs> indicated, that the arms and materials used uh, in this grievous act of terror uh, were funded, actually, and supplied uh, by the Serbian government themselves, by officers as well as officials. Um, excuse me. Your, ex is your Excellency, uh, Mr. Poincaré, uh, you're concerned about the delay, uh, but our delay is actually the, re the result of our own patience and is evidence of the care with which we took to make sure that our ultimatum was both fair but reflective of the situation that's before. From an ultimatum perspective, we don't really see any, re any way that we can back away from, from this uh, and ensure the security and safety of our people and our monarch. Count Sazanov, would you like to respond? Uh, yes, I would. Thank you, Sir Gray. Uh, Count Virgil, the, the funny thing here is, is that while you're talking about how Serbia has created some climate for extremism, the fact of the matter is that you are creating a climate for war here by weaving this narrative that the Serbian people uh, through this body and multiple acts, all of which could potentially have simply been isolated incidents, to, to allow yourself to have the opportunity to go into the Balkans and to impose your will. This is something that one, the Russian Empire will not stand for, and two, the Serbian people do not deserve in any stretch of the imagination. And as for your delay, that's simply, we could just put that up to you getting all your ducks in a row so that way, when you're sitting here in front of us, you can put forth your best, uh, your best face and, well, tell us that, for example, like you are today, that this is all Serbia's fault and they should be punished as dearly as possible. That is something that the Russian Empire will not stand for. Count von Bettman. I'm concerned, uh, Count Sazanov, your Excellency, Monsieur Poincaré, um, that your response to this uh, impending crisis is to attack the victim. Um, Monsieur Poincaré, you express concern about the timing of uh, the ultimatum. Can you not understand that an attack on the Archduke, uh, the heir to the throne of the Austro-Hungarian Empire is surely a, a disturbing uh, and, and upsetting event and, and that there must be some understanding of the, the trauma which this government has experienced uh, before we start attacking <laughs> them for the, their choice of, of timing in response. Uh, Monsieur Sa or, pardon me, Count Sazanov, uh, I'm concerned uh, that you appear to be the only uh, one amongst us who has yet mentioned the, pr the prospect of a general European war. Uh, I wonder if perhaps that gives some indication of your intentions in this matter. Um, and perhaps yourself and, and our, your colleague, Monsieur Poincaré, would like to share with this conference what it is that you discussed together in Petersburg in order to put our minds at ease about your intentions. Your Excellency, Mr. Poincaré. Um, as I mentioned in my opening remark, I am deeply upset at what happened to the Archduke. And indeed, Austro-Hungarian Austro Empire deserves to be upset. However, waiting as long as they did, as my esteemed colleague, the Count Sazanov, has mentioned, does make it seem like they're putting their ducks in a row, so to speak, especially the aggressive nature of the ultimatum in itself. And you are right, they are a victim in this case, but now they are turning Serbia into a victim in order to express their revenge and their anger at the action against an innocent party. They know who the assassin is, they have dealt with the situation. Why do they need to be so aggressive against Serbia? Maybe someone else should be brought in to deal with the situation who is less focused on revenge and anger at this point. Kent Sazanov. Well, firstly, allow me to uh, answer the question that uh, Count von Bethmann Hallweg asked about what we discussed. We discussed wonderful things like fine china, Russian opera, and other great things that just extended the camaraderie between 
our two empires. Well, an empire and a great republic. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that as we, we are doing nothing of the sort in terms of warmongering, we are merely protecting a state that quite simply is, go is being had at this moment, that is going to end up having to deal with an aggressive neighbor simply because they could not potentially actually, you know, keep sort of their own uh, monarch or future monarch protected. The fact of the matter is, is unfortunately we do have this problem uh, in, in the Sardom. We have dealt with assassinations and they're horrible tragedies. In every case we have dealt with them very seriously and quite simply, the fact of the matter is, as has been stated multiple times, the individual responsible is already in custody. They have been dealt with. Why are we sending this further? We can simply step back by taking the ultimatum off the table and moving forward on a better foot. I feel as though the genuine voices for peace are not being here recorded properly. They are treated as cantankerous, troublesome meddlers, it seems, without legitimacy. But I have heard that it is the assembled statesmen here who lack legitimacy. Who amongst them could Mr. Russell, keep a civil tongue in your mouth. <laughs> Count Berktold, would you like to respond to Count Sazanov's remarks? I would. <clears throat> Let me first say, I share your affinity for the Russian opera, I believe. <clears throat> All right. It is wonderful. It is. We feel the ultimatum is more than fair. Surely if such an act of terrorism uh, were directed towards your czar, you would react in much the same way, if not perhaps a more militant fashion. <laughs> Moreover, both uh, Your Excellency and, uh, and Count Sazanov continuously mention this notion of one lone terrorist, one lone assassin being caught and dealt with. This assassin did not work alone. It was part of a much broader conspiracy, which we feel extended to the Serbian government. It is for this reason that we feel it is necessary to take the steps that we took in our carefully constructed ultimatum, which I apologize for the time that it took, but we wanted to be very clear about our position. Is the ultimatum, uh, <coughs> must it be accepted in whole? That it is the purpose of the ultimatum. <laughs> very well, I'd like to make a proposal. Uh, the point that they did not accept, if I understand correctly, was that you wish to conduct an, in, an investigation into the murders on Serbian territory. Uh, How can we trust the Serbians to, to conduct a proper investigation of their own people? Understandable. So my proposal is that we have an international investigation with observers from all of the great powers involved, and they will decide on the right or wrong of the case. Would that be acceptable to the Austro-Hungarian Empire? Well, let me first begin by questioning the, the utility of, a, of an international investigation. We are very suspicious of the designs and motivations of uh, the Tsar and Count Sazanov. Uh, we are equally suspicious, <clears throat> perhaps, of the motivations of His Excellency, Mr. Poincaré. If I was prepared uh, to offer on on behalf of <clears throat> His Majesty, perhaps a, maybe a conciliatory note. It would be the following. We could see Germany leading the investigation in our stead and keeping us fully apprised of everything that is happening. Any interference whatsoever <coughs> would be met with immediate military action. We would also need formal uh, agreements from all of the uh, delegates present today, that Serbia would not uh, engage in any territorial expansion of any kind for a minimum of 20 years. The Serbian army would be limited in size to that only which is necessary to protect their interests. We also demand a formal apology and acceptance of wrongdoing on behalf of the Serbian government. It is only here that we can begin to discuss compromise. I must interrupt. 
You ask of the utility of an international investigation. The utility is to prevent war. And I agree with my esteemed colleague, Mr. Russell, in that all the voices are not being heard, heard here today. I am here as a representative of the workers. And it must be realized, the workers are the ones who will bleed most during this war. Workers are a brotherhood that extends beyond national borders. And we must do everything in our power to prevent this war. That is the utility of an international investigation. Mr. Jerez, I'm not sure this is useful. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Brunk. <laughs> uh, I think France would like to address the unsettling notion that's coming from both uh, Count von bethmann holweg and Count Berchtold of France being underhanded or the puppet of the Russian Empire, so to speak, uh, it's very clear that we have a military convention and agreement that we've had for a couple of years now. However, it is a defensive agreement. And in the past, we have not come to the aid of Russia in the Balkans. We have stayed neutral. So to accuse us of just following along in an aggressive pattern is insulting, and France will not stand by it. And at the same time, to accuse us of impartiality because of our connection to Russia, and then to hold up the German Empire as an impartial um, investigator within to Serbia just seems preposterous. I agree with the delegate from France, and I'm, I am firmly a firm believer in the idea of an international investigation. Why cannot all the great powers take part in this? And that way, uh, we will have voices from both sides. Count von Bettmann. Uh, Sir Edward, um, Your Ex Excellency, Monsieur Poincaré, uh, I, I fear that uh, perhaps the, the ramblings of your socialist agitators are clouding your judgment. Um, <laughs> If you would like, we can provide you with some uh, advice on how to contain them better. Um, <laughs> there is no aggression in Austria's policy of seeking restitution for wrongdoing. Uh, we would be happy to accept, uh, at the request of the Austrian government, the position of uh, leading this investigation. Um, but I, I will remind you, um, Sir Edward, uh, I, we. Our government was, was skeptical of this conference uh, from the beginning, and that is because um, arbitration, if there is to be arbitration, must be requested by the aggrieved party. That, that's a well-established principle of diplomacy and has been for many years. Um, if there is to be an investigation conducted by someone other than the representatives of the wronged party, it must be done at the request of the aggrieved party. Thus far, the only request forthcoming from Vienna is for a German-led investigation. Count Sazanov, I appeal to you and your government to use the influence that you have in Serbia uh, to convince them there that uh, the best course toward peace is to allow this investigation uh, in the spirit of openness uh, so that if there is fault, we may find it. And if they are innocent of any fault, then we may um, satisfy ourselves of Serbian innocence and uh, move on. Beth Can, uh, talks of the spirit of openness, but here we have the fate of millions to be settled by a secretive conclave. In any sane international order, this would not be acceptable whatsoever. And let's not be mistaken here. There are powerful forces for peace outside. <coughs> My esteemed colleague from France has talked about the French socialist movement, a formidable force. We can see the headlines from the, the British press. The liberal papers are unanimously in favor of Britain maintaining its neutrality. And even the Tory ranks, even though they have been uh, uh, making hay of the German bogey for years and years, they are lukewarm about the idea of being dragged in. <coughs> yes, there are exceptions, of course. The gutter press that's uh, baying for German blood already. And the Times, I believe, this morning talked about England's duty, honour and interest being, uh, being required to, uh, uh, in the, if it comes to it, we will have to, to uh, back our Entente partners, Russia and France. But thankfully, the House, of which Sir Edward is a member, the Liberal side of the House is firmly in favour of neutrality too. And I would wager that he could not even persuade the majority of his own cabinet. Mr. Russell. For someone who professes to be peace-loving, you're doing a good job of derailing the talks at this diplomatic meeting. I'd ask that you keep your tongue behind your, your lips. Thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Sazanov, I'd like to hear from you. I'd also like to just point out it's interesting that he speaks of sanity when clearly he's insane. But with that all said, I just want to ask a couple of questions here to our, uh, well, com counterparts in Germany and Austro-Hungary. When do you suppose we're going to start flying the Austro-Hungarian flag back over Serbia? Is that essentially what you're wanting out of this? The fact of the matter is, is that I already can tell you what the Serbian reply to any of this will be, and that will be, uh, I believe the word is no. The fact of the matter is, is that they're not going to trust that the Germans will do what's right here. They definitely don't trust the Austro-Hungarians, who apparently want to uh, limit their troops uh, to what would be sufficient to protect their interests. So I ask then the Austro-Hungarians to give us a good a accurate estimate of how large their army is, because that's what the Serbians may need by the looks of it. The fact of the matter is, is that I can at least potentially guarantee one thing here, and that is that I can go to my Serbian counterpart and potentially convince them of a investigation and mediation, arbitration, led by Sir Gray. Even though Sir Gray did not invite them here, uh, we have been in enough discussions that I, that I have urged them that should the British step forward, especially since at this point they have not firmly sided with one of our apparent camps here. They might be the best option here to come to some sort of peaceful resolution. Would Austria-Hungary accept such an investigation? Well, let me first say this ultimatum is designed for peace. Serbia had not rejected Article 5. We would not be sitting here, and we would be in peaceful terms. Moreover, we have no territorial ambitions whatsoever. We're not seeking to absorb Serbia and to fly the Austro-Hungarian flag over uh, its sovereign territory. Nevertheless, we cannot just allow these actions to go unmet. If, we, if you do not trust Germany to conduct a responsible investigation, why should we trust the fact that Russia could participate in any way? We know the relationship between Russia and France. This eliminates uh, possibility for partiality as well. And how can we be sure that Sir Gray will actually defend the interests of Austria-Hungary when he has shown previously a predilection toward uh, siding with uh, France? I have a f another proposal. I understand that there are a lot of competing interests, uh, which is understandable. Because of that, I suggest that we invite the American president, Mr. Roosevelt, not anymore, uh, Wilson. Wilson, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a long day, we understand. Thank you. Uh, the reason Roosevelt came to my mind was because Mr. Roosevelt mediated the end of your war with, uh, with Japan, as you might remember, in 1905. And that was a satisfactory conclusion. So why would not an American investigation uh, be satisfactory to all parties? Well, with, with regards to their mediation uh, toward the end of the Russian war with Japan, it was not really a tall order considering the fact that Russia was soundly defeated by the Japanese. So I highly doubt that this <coughs> introduction of, uh, of the United States president would get us anywhere. He's not familiar with what is going on. They are across the ocean. We don't really see how uh, the addition of uh, Mr. Wilson to these talks would benefit us at all. Um, Mr. Von Betten. Frankly, sir, I'm not even confident that uh, President Wilson could find Serbia on a map. Um, and why exactly? Would we want to introduce uh, more republics when those already at the table are causing such, uh, such difficulties bringing their domestic affairs into uh, the, affair, the high affairs of state? Um, this is a European problem which ought to be solved by those of us who have for so long been invested in the stability of this continent. But clearly we can't solve it on our own. Uh, perhaps their disinterest just disinterestedness is not a weakness but the strength of this proposal. Mr. Poincaré. I would have to agree with my esteemed colleague, Sir Gray. You have continued to rag on and on about the impartiality of myself and my Russian colleague. However, at no point has there been any addressing of your own problems of revenge or your own alliance system. And we offer a neutral party, a party that, as you have said, has no connection. He may not even be able to find Serbia on the map. Would that not make him a perfect neutral party to come into this situation? <laughs> 
say I hear a lot of people talking at this table about the fact that they are only acting defensively, that they have no territorial designs. Your Excellency, Monsieur uh, Poincaré, I heard yourself say something to this effect, yet only last year you actively supported a bill in front of our chambers extending French military service to three years, and the sole purpose for this bill was to create a French armed service that was the same size of that as Germany. I would like to cut you off right there, Mr. Jarre. His Excellency, Mr. Poincaré. I would like to cut you right Mr. Jarre, right if you will. As we saw from the Moroccan crisis, with the level of German military might that exists. France needs to defend itself. We lost in the Franco-Prussian War. You did not live under German occupation like I myself did for a couple of years. And none of this is an offensive action. This is purely defensive for France. Would you rather France have no military and lay down to the aggressions that we're seeing being presented here by both the German Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire? I question your French national spirit. I am no traitor. And as We're, a representative gentlemen, of gentlemen, France, gentlemen. the elected representative of France, you do not represent the people here. I do, and it would be asked that you be silent in the rest of the proceedings. We are out of time for today. We will reconvene again tomorrow. Are the workers not the elected In the people? meantime, in the meantime, I suggest you all mull over the meaning of the word moderation, as it's clear we're going to need a great deal of it to come to some agreement. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're well rested. <laughs> it's a new day. Uh, we still have much to do. In the cause of peace, I've drawn up a working paper for us to discuss. It proposes a few ways in which peace m might re be preserved. You have it in front of you. You can pull it out. Now, we're going to skip the first point. We discussed it uh, yesterday, and it didn't seem to come to much. So we're going to move on to the second one. I'm going to read it out, and then we can have preliminary thoughts on the point and see if it might be a past. So should war break out between Serbia and Austria, it is a possibility. All other parties resolve to waive their alliance commitments for the duration of the conflict, thus avoiding a general European war and confining the war to the Balkans. Take a moment to think that over. I should be clear that you're waiving your alliances merely in this one case. Uh, any previous standing diplomatic agreements would hold for any other case. Captain von Bettman. Yes. Sir Edward, it appears uh, to me that in order for this proposal to succeed, the first party that must indicate their intent uh, is Count Sazanov. Will the Russians stand aside if Serbia does not comply with the demands that have been made of them. Uh, if they are willing to do so, then perhaps the German Empire will also stand aside and allow Austria and Serbia to resolve their differences between them. Count Sassen. I'd like to you to name the alliance that, I have with, that we have with Serbia. The fact of the matter is we're willing to waive our, our, our responsibilities uh, towards the French if they are willing to do the same to us. Uh, the same thing for any that we might have to the British for this situation. If this resolves the conflict, we will. However, we have nothing to waive with regards to Serbia. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> Count Berchtold. That sounds like evasion. Absolutely not reasonable. <coughs> what that indicates to me is that Russia has every intention of moving aggressively against uh, the monarchy in the event that we cannot come to a peaceful resolution with Serbia. As such, we would call upon our German friends to support us in the event of the Russian attack. We are where we began. You rejected outright the proposal. Count Sazanov. So are you now not a right now practically stating that you have no desire to waive your alliances to actually resolve this crisis, therefore continuing to just point out that you are just simply a warmonger looking to potentially gain territory to humiliate another state 
And given that your history, at least the history of the German Empire, with regards to imposing their will in areas they have no business being, we only need to look in at the Ottoman Empire and a certain uh, Lyman von Sanders that was placed there. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that really this is potentially the best option you're going to get. If you fear that potentially the Russian Empire may become involved in some way, perhaps that might then lead you to reconsider this aggressive stance. Count von Bettmann. Count Sazanov, uh, Russian uh, interests in the Strait of Constantinople are well known, and I assure you that our friendship with the Sublime Port and the dispatch of General von Sanders to Constantinople is entirely in keeping with our interest in defending the status quo in that region. Uh, it is certainly not Germany that wishes to see that upset. Um, last night, His Excellency Monsieur Poincaré spoke of the importance of defending one's interests um, as an explanation for the change in your military service law. Well, I assure you that there is nothing more uh, than that same sentiment motivating German and Austrian policy in this matter. We stand together because we must in order to ensure that our interests are defended against parties which have a demonstrated pattern of behavior in terms of fomenting disputes and uh, attempting to acquire territory, particularly in the Balkan region. Uh, need I refer to all of the instances in the last oh, 40 years in which Russia has been involved in disturbances in this region? Kent would you like to respond to that? Well, firstly, it's interesting that um, Count von bethmann holweg you kept talking about status quo, and yet you're supporting the Austro-Hungarian Empire that is clearly looking to change the status quo. So I question whether or not you understand the term status quo. But that all being said, the fact of the matter is, is our interest in the Balkans is to ensure the status quo. That is one reason why I've been doing that. We are intentionally trying to ensure stability, not the status quo. I apparently have been confused by your own speech. But the fact of the matter is, is that without the Russian Empire's efforts in the Balkans, there's a good chance that, well, the Balkans would continue to war time and time again, and we are working with our Serbian counterparts to ensure stability in the region at their benefit, as they are perhaps one of the strongest powers in that region. Count Berthold. And might I say, good job. We do not seek to change the status quo at all. We just simply seek to ensure our own security, the safety of our people, the existence of our monarchy. That is all we seek to do. We don't seek territorial ambition in Serbia. We don't seek to crush them. We simply seek to ensure that all of our interests are defended and that this grievous action is properly addressed. Your Excellency, Mr. Poincaré. If all you seek is to defend the status quo and the defense of your country, then why yesterday did we just throw aside the idea of an international investigation into Serbia and a complete neutral party, either Great Britain, the Great British Empire, or the United States becoming involved in this investigation? It makes <coughs> me think that you're not thinking about your own internal defense. You're thinking aggressively in expanding within Serbia in the Balkan regions. Of course, I'm a utilitarian, therefore I believe that a limited European war, should it come to that, would be more satisfactory than a general conflict. But this is not an outcome to be welcomed either. If peace is to ensue by these means, it's going to be the kind of uh, it's going to be an armed standoff between these two rival blocks. Nothing permanently durable will be eventuated. And that is what the statesmen assembled here must, must tackle. They must deal with the underlying and mutual suspicions and fears that have brought us to this terrible impasse. And I would build on that by saying that yesterday at the beginning of this conference, Sir Edward, you urged moderation. And I would point to the last point of this, second point of this working paper, which is avoiding a general European war. And that, that ought to be our most ardent goal. For any war that breaks out that's a general war in Europe, is not going to be a short war. Untold numbers will suffer. And I must make the point that the ravages and the sickness and the death and the misery that come as a result of this war, eventually the masses, your people will turn to you, your lead, their leaders. 
and they will demand of you what reasons there are for all of the corpses. And when you have no answer, I warn you, as has been predicted by socialists at the Second International two years ago, the end of this, revolution will let loose. It is in no one's interest to have... I don't want to hear any more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Russell, I appreciate your ideal idealism, uh, but we must be realists at this table. Uh, a war in the Balkans would be preferable to a general European war, and that's what this proposal is about. Can we keep this to the Balkans? Mr. Poincaré. Uh, I would just like to comment on Mr. Jarre's comments yet again. You keep on talking about peace this and peace that, which is what we are here to discuss, yes. Um, and yet, you have sent a lot of your criticism towards myself, who is trying to promote peace here, and the horribleness that is being directed at the Serbian nation, and yet at no point have you really criticized the aggressive nature of the German Empire or the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And I know that you have engaged in work trying to bring together the French and German workers, and it makes me yet again question um, whether or not you have any <coughs> French nationalist spirit, or if you just want the Germans to completely take over France. As I said yesterday, I'm no traitor to France. I would gladly die in defense of my nation. And, and that's all we're calling for. Of your nation. But my <laughs> argument is that we, you are all, all the states here are being overtly militaristic. You're preparing for war. And Count Berktold, I'd like to hear from you now. Thank you. <laughs> Perhaps you can deal with your domestic issues at another time. <laughs> we're discussing yours, though, in one sense, so. Well, and we find war to be equally undesirable. We are the only ones here who have dictated a clear program for peace. It is us. We are seeking, we are the ones who, who, are, who are seeking peace here. It seems that our friends in Russia and France do not share this conviction. Your Excellency, Mr. Poincaré. You, you keep on mentioning your own interests in terms of peace and that. What about the Serbian nation and their own interests of protecting themselves and their own defense? Would you be willing at any point in your own history of your empire to have another nation come in and investigate on your soil and dictate what you did? Count Sazanov. I don't think I could have said it better myself. The fact of the matter is, is that what, we, what the Austro-Hungarian Empire would like is that the sovereignty of Serbia is completely compromised. That is just simply not even a possible or rational solution at this point. Right now we have an opportunity to actually come up with at least a, a temporary plan for peace that could potentially become a much more permanent one. <coughs> the fact of the matter is, is that we have already just flat out heard from the Austro-Hungarians that, and the Germans that they plan to, one, go to war, and two, they will not waive their alliance commitments. Why? Well, they apparently are a little bit more afraid of getting spanked in some way that I can't seem to comprehend in any way. The fact of the matter is, is that the Russian Empire at this point will do what's necessary to protect Serbia. We are doing this out of goodwill, nothing more than that. We want to ensure that there is justice on both sides. And at this point, the fact of the matter remains. The person who did this, did this is in custody. It's already been dealt with. And yet, this seems more and more like an opportunity by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, uh, with the uh, help of the German Empire, to interfere in the affairs of Serbia, to mold it in an image that it might find a little bit more platable. Count von Batman. Thank you, Sir Edward. Um, I'd like to remind all of those here present that the initial proposal uh, is not for an annexation of any territory. It is not for any uh, reduction of, of, of Serbian military might. The initial proposal is for an in investigation into the murder of the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne. If we can return to that <coughs> issue and encourage Serbia to accept the terms which Austria has provided, then uh, there is no need to speak of war. Uh, although perhaps um, as, as events are progressing, it may be more appropriate to move on to your third point and discuss halting mobilization, since we're beginning to get reports that certain parties to these talks uh, are moving in that direction already. I think that's actually a wise choice. I'm a firm believer in patience. Uh, we'll move on to the third point of the working paper, if you'll look at it now. All parties agree to halt mobilization for seven days to permit us to drop a more comprehensive and permanent agreement to maintain peace. What we need, gentlemen, is time. This will give us that time. Will all parties agree to seven days with no mobilization? I strongly urge you all to agree to this. Count von Betten. Once again, Sir Edward, um, it is the Russians who must move first. Um, 
we they, they deny having any uh, alliance or, or, or military commitment with Serbia, and yet they appear to be preparing to go to war on behalf of Serbia. That looks very much to me like an alliance. Uh, so will they waive their alliance commitments, um, which they have somehow managed to keep secret from the rest of us, and will they agree to halt their mobilization processes so that these talks can continue? Count Sazanov? First off, I've already stated that we would happily waive our alliance commitments, provided that the other parties are okay with this. Um, the fact of the matter is, as I've stated again, we have no alliance commitments with Serbia. However, as for this mobilization, I do not know what you speak of. There is no mobilization happening within the Russian Empire. Well, then I suggest, sir, that you summon your military <laughs> attaché and get in contact with your for Ministry of War, because events on the ground seem to suggest otherwise. Perhaps they're just moving pieces around, training exercises. Who knows? <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that I can firmly state that at this moment there is no mobilization happening within Russia. Perhaps I can get the ball rolling. Britain will firmly agree to halt all mobilization for seven days. <laughs> will anyone join me? We certainly would. France will join you. Count Berchtold. We will agree to a partial mo uh, mobilization halt uh, once we are satisfied uh, that Count Sazanov and His Excellency Mr. Poincaré uh, fulfill their ends of the bargain. Your Excellency. Yet again, with all your talk of patience and impartiality, you are just swiping away this demand based on what we do. Would you prefer that France and Russia not have any defensive actions for themselves when you have been going on and on these past two days about your own defensive protection? We've agreed not to mobilize. Why can't you agree not to mobilize? If your intention is not war, why must we act first? Count von Bettman. Uh, your, elect, your Excellency, Monsieur Parcare, um, the reason that we speak of defense and question your motives are very simple. Um, Austria has been attacked. They have a right to defense. Uh, on the other hand, Russia has not been attacked. France has not been attacked. And yet in recent years, both of these states have made changes to their military, um, uh, their, their conscription laws and the organization of their military. Uh, in the case of France, as was alluded to yesterday, uh, increasing your terms of service to grow the size of your army. In the case of Russia, also instituting military reforms. Why do nations which are supposedly interested only in their defense um, take such measures as these? Uh, I'm sure you can understand that our position, situated between two states, uh, neither of which have been willing to conclude defensive treaties with us, and both of which are instituting military reforms, is very worrying. Count Van Berchtold. Let me just add the evasive nature of Count Sazanov's rhetoric regarding his non-alliance with Serbia uh, makes our confidence uh, in their statements virtually non-existent. We shared uh, our friend's position here that France and Russia have not been attacked. We have been attacked. This is the reason why we must act the way that we do. Perhaps you would understand it if the shoe was on the other foot, as it were. Your Excellency, Mr. Poincaré. Uh, I would just like to address uh, Count von Bethmann Holweg's point of us not being able to have our own defensive military when the two of you have been going on and on and on about your own defense within your nation. So we cannot increase the size of our military for our own personal interests of defense. We have made no aggressive, offensive proposals at this meeting so far. And at the same time, sir, how is France supposed to feel when Austro-Hungarian Empire and the German Empire, which are strong military forces, are so close to us? Should we not also feel intimidated? And do you not also have an alliance like we have an alliance? And to the point of you are the victim, yes, it is sad what happened to the Archduke. However, it was not the country that engaged in it. It was a sole assassin, as we have mentioned over and over and over again. And until you do your investigation, we have no proof it was the nation. And as we have already argued again and again and again, we would like an impartial investigation that's not being led by the interests of a country seeking revenge or its very aggressive ally. Count Berthold. So this would be in favor of a nation that seeks to cover up Serbian crimes. Count Sazanov? Well, well I, that's a horrible way to talk about uh, President uh, Wilson or even our uh, 
counterpart here, Sir Gray. The fact of the matter is they have shown, well, you've it was sort of mentioned earlier that, well, President Wilson probably doesn't know where Serbia is on a map, and he's all of a sudden going to potentially uh, hurt whatever interests Austro-Hungary has. The fact of the matter is, is that if you are really seeking justice here, that we should have an impartial source that does not care about the rights of either side. They care about justice. And this seems to be something lost on the Austro-Hungarians that are seemingly looking at either taking whatever humiliation they can out of Serbia, either by this ultimatum that essentially sacrifices their sovereignty, or by a military means, which is the only reason why we have been, well, a bit evasive. The fact of the matter is, is that we have every right to be suspicious of the Austro-Hungarians who seem to have basically made it an all or nothing statement. Either the Austro-Hungarians will essentially govern in many ways by, by handcuffing the Serbian state, or they will be run over militarily. You say that there are no territorial gains sought. How can we guarantee that's going to be the case in the event that you actually then bring your military uh, personnel over? I'd like to come back to the point at hand. Halting mobilization for seven days. Is it at all possible? We have not heard a yes or no response from either Germany or Austria-Hungary. Is it possible? <laughs> It is possible if those who are currently mobilizing act first. We have not yet initiated mobilization. We have nothing to halt. We have reports that other states have moved ahead further than we have, uh, and that is concerning to us. So that's a yes for Germany. We'll maintain our current position so long as the other states withdraw mobilization orders. Austria-Hungary, this really comes down to you. Will you halt mobilization for seven days? We will not breach any borders. <laughs> As an I believe that was what we call a no. Uh, at least I was honest when I said that we aren't mobilizing. In fact, the only country that seems to be having this issue is Austro-Hungary. So again, I pose to you the same criticism I have constantly said and parroted over and over again. It seems like this is a lot more than just simple revenge. This is about humiliation and potentially much more. If, it, it sounds to, at least myself at this table, that if you were to have your way, Serbia would no longer be a factor at all in not just Balkan politics, but European politics. I suspect that all the assembled powers have cynical and acquisitive aims that they would like to uh, realize in, 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 by armed conflict if necessary. I do hope I'm wrong, but I'm beginning to fear the worst here, the inflexibility. Uh, and let there be no mistake, if war does end soon, there can be no real winner here. Victors and vanquished alike will suffer untold consequences. Civilization will be set back for perhaps a century or more. I'm not ready to give up yet. We do seem to be at an impasse. Uh, I'd like to open the floor to any proposals that might keep the peace. Do I, are there any suggestions from any of the parties involved? Mr. Poincaré. Um, as I've already agreed with multiple times, I feel an international investigation, an impartial international investigation, would aid in this. And if the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the German Empire are not seeking revenge or pushing for war that they claim to be, then I do not understand why there is a problem with the great British Empire or the United States engaging in this. And in terms of inflexibility that uh, Mr. Bertrand Russell from your country has discussed, uh, I feel this side of the table has been incredibly flexible in willing to go into this investigation and halting mobilization. It is the aggressors on that side who appear inflexible to me. It's time to vote, gentlemen. We're out of time. Uh, will Europe go to war? I'm going to start with Count Berktold. I, I urge you, before you vote, think carefully. <laughs> Take your time. You please recognize the forces for peace in this world. War is not inevitable. We remain committed to our ultimatum, and in that event, we will halt mobilization and peace will be achieved. As it stands, that means war. <laughs> We've heard your vote. I have, I have offered an alternative. What's your alternative? The German-led investigation. Will that be acceptable to anyone? The of Serbian army. 
which is incredibly, incredibly impartial after all of the slings <coughs> that my poor country has taken for being impartial because of our alliance with Russia. It is insulting to hear that the German representative is not impartial due to his alliance with you. That proposal is not going to work. Uh, I'd like to hear a final vote. Will you go to war? We will act in the best interests of the monarchy. Count Sazanov, I'd like to hear Russia's position on this. Well, first off, the Sardom of Russia would like to state that in the event that this working paper was actually agreed upon by perhaps the most belligerent here, especially a uh, international investigation led by the United Kingdom would be something that we would be willing to stand behind along with the many other clauses that are here. However, with this not being the case, and if Oscar Hungary w refuses to pull back their ultimatum or to continue with their all or nothing tactic of it has to be the entire ultimatum accepted or war, we will be waiting on the front lines to defend our Serbian ally. So be it. Count von Bettmann. The German Empire has no wish to go to war. However, we will honor our alliance commitments if our Austrian friends fall victim to the interference of any other power if they attempt to defend their interests in the Balkan Peninsula. Your Excellency, Mr. Von Kerry. Uh, as my esteemed colleague, Count Stasinov, mentioned, if the working paper had indeed been agreed upon, then we would have pushed and sued for peace. However, now we feel we must be put on the defensive if both the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the German Empire are mobilizing and pursuing a war. How are we to know that this will not impact France at some point, especially with the military problems that have existed between the French government and the German government in the past. And due to our military conventions with Russia, the threats that we see all around, we feel we are being pushed into a corner of war, even though we do not wish it. Regretfully, Britain finds herself forced into the most unhappy of circumstances. We cannot sit on the sidelines and let this happen. We too will go to war. So be it, gentlemen. The lamps are going to go out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetimes. <laughs>